So welcome everyone to the live launch of High Voltage Leadership. Again, thank you so much for spending some time with me this morning. I'm super excited to have you all here. I'll apologize in advance. Many of you know that I've got three little dogs uh, that are my constant companions and sleep under my desk while I'm working. Uh, unfortunately, if the UPS man comes to the door and he knocks, they're going to go crazy. So I'll apologize in advance. If that does happen, I'll try and mute myself as quickly as possible so you don't get uh, barking in your ear. Um, but I'm hopefully uh, everything will go real smoothly this morning and our technology works and everything goes well. So um, first of all, uh, thanks again for participating in this week's um, incredible activities. Um, I'm super excited to be able to launch High Voltage Leadership. Um, what I do, what I'm passionate about, what I really love um, to the whole world. And you guys have been an incredibly big part of that. And I'm super, super flattered um, that you, um, you know, would come along on this journey with me. And so many of you have been a part of the ongoing creation and the development um, and my journey. And, and the journey of high voltage leadership really is my journey. So I'm super grateful to have you here um, and uh, participating with me today. So let's Let's, let's get started. I'm excited. So though, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Lindsay White, and I am the owner and principal coach at High Voltage Leadership. Uh, not only am I a certified HR professional, but I am a certified professional coach. And I am, I absolutely love being able to bring those two pieces that I'm the most passionate about, the coaching um, and the human resources, the people uh, pieces together uh, in one place in high voltage leadership. Um, and I'm so excited to talk to you today about what that means for me um, and what that potentially means uh, for you and for other female small business leaders and their teams. So first and foremost, I want to say uh, cheers. Oh, where did my cheers go? That's odd. I want to say cheers to you guys. Thanks again for being here. Cheers. Uh, I hope that you're having a wonderful Friday morning, but also really cheers to three years in the journey and the development of high voltage leadership. Um, this has been uh, really uh, an incredible journey for me over the last couple years. And um, this brand renovation, as I've been calling it, uh, has been a really cool journey um, of learning and growth and personal experience uh, for me in terms of who I am as an individual, but also in terms of who I am as an entrepreneur and a business owner. And um, I, like, it's not something I actually ever imagined doing. So this is uh, just so, uh, so cool for me today. So cheers to all of you for being here. Thanks for sharing this uh, with me this morning, this really, really important moment. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the agenda today. It's jam packed and we're going to keep it moving really quickly. So first and foremost, I want to tell you about high voltage leadership. That's really a big part of what you're here. Like, you know, what is this thing that she keeps talking about and posting about for the last two weeks? Um, I have some really incredible um, speakers and testimonials today. So Susan Alford is here. She's a leadership coach and a PR strategist, a close friend uh, and um, mentor of mine over the last three years of my journey. She's going to talk to us this morning. Mel Friesen um, is a holistic nutritionist um, and health, pro health professional. And she is actually one of my original uh, clients and a good friend. She's going to talk to us a little bit about her journey and how coaching was impactful for her. Um, we're going to dive into this little mini workshop that's all about uncovering your leadership superpower. It's going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to doing that with you today. Of course, I want to talk to you a little bit about High Voltage Leadership's program and my founder's promotion um, that I've got running till the end of the month. Um, and then I've got a couple really cool videos uh, to show you. So Irina King is one of my longest and dearest clients. And she's an entrepreneur and a business leader in a male-dominated business. So she sent me a little message to play for you. 
Jonathan Christian is a, a close friend, uh, as well as being um, a, a mentor for me. He's a chief imagination officer. We make stuff happen. Um, and he sent me a really great video that I'm, I'm really excited to play for you as well. Um, and then, of course, I've got uh, a little wrap up and some acknowledgements that I want to do at the end. So as you can see, it's a really great agenda, um, and we're going to keep it rolling this morning. So first and foremost, why we're all here, what is high voltage leadership? What's the story? And why, why the shift? Why the relaunch? Um, and I want to tell you about the new focus that I have because I'm really excited about it. And, and I'm going to go into some detail later on some of those new um, services that I'm going to offer because I'm, I'm actually, I think they're going to be really impactful and I'm really excited about them. So what's the story, Morning Glory, <laughs> right? What, what is the deal with the high voltage story um, and my passion, my purpose, and really this new direction that I'm taking? Um, so uh, the, the journey for me started three years ago when I left my corporate HR role. Um, and I jumped right in uh, to my professional coach training program. And that took me almost a year. Um, and I was so lucky that I really got to immerse myself in that. That's where I met Susan, who's played such an important role in, in uh, the development of high voltage leadership. But it was really crucial for me, um, and, and the coaching came at a really impactful time in my life when I was in the middle of um, a pretty significant transition. And um, not only learning, but practicing with my colleagues, um, I learned all about my life purpose um, and designed my own life purpose statement, which is something I love to do with my clients now. So my life purpose statement is to be the high voltage extension cord that connects you to your inner brilliance. So that's really where high voltage came from. It's who I am. You guys that know me or are just experiencing me today, I know you can tell that high voltage is a part of my being. It's a part of my presence. And so high voltage coaching was the first incarnation of my business because I really Really wanted to focus on the coaching. I'm super passionate about that. And I love to uncover that inner brilliance that for many of us is covered over by our routines and our work and our daily lives and our accountabilities and our responsibilities. And so opening that up and revealing that beautiful inner brilliance is really what I am supposed to do uh, for myself and for others. So that's really what I am passionate about. What I have uncovered and the reason that it's now high voltage leadership is uh, my business purpose now is because I really, really recognize that not only am I passionate about coaching and particularly about coaching women, but also about people strategy and that talent management piece and my HR background. And so being able to combine the two things that I really love and that I'm pretty good at into one thing and really focusing on these small business women um, who really are uh, my kindred spirits, my people, uh, because now I am one of them. Being able to combine those two things and help these incredible small business owners um, become better leaders in their lives and in their businesses, support their teams in growing incredible cultures, and also bringing that all together with a people strategy that actually drives their business plan. That's what really is, uh, is my passion that combines all the things that I love. And that's the new direction for high voltage leadership. So this is really um, my core statement. This is what I truly believe is, is that every small business deserves three things. Great leadership, an impactful people strategy, and a culture that really inspires. So as much as I have my own purpose statement, this is the purpose statement for high voltage leadership. This is what it's all about. Great leadership, impactful people strategy, and cultures that are really inspiring inside of these really beautiful, interesting small businesses that are owned and driven and loved by the women uh, that lead them. So why is it important to make this transition uh, to high voltage leadership? Well, first of all, it's focused on coaching that really helps 
uh, small business owners blend their work and their life. And we know, you know, we've all experienced this, particularly over the last couple of months, as our work and our life have existed uh, in the same physical space. Um, and so really helping these uh, female small business owners fall in love with their businesses again and make their life and their work uh, really integrate beautifully is so important for me. It's all about building programs that are specifically for those small and medium sized businesses um, because they do have different requirements and there are different things that happen. Um, and so I really wanted to make that come alive uh, for those, those organizations. Um, it's coaching that's really focused on creating a leadership brand that's very individual. It's all about you and how you show up and what you bring to your leadership. It's about creating culture that truly grows uh, your team in your business and what's right uh, for that team and for your organization. And of course, it's about crafting um, a very beautiful people strategy that really drives the business forward. So I fundamentally believe that your business plan um, is only worth the paper it's written on if you don't have a people strategy that makes it come alive. So of course, for me, it's always about connection and community. And that really helps business leaders and entrepreneurs build the resilience that they need, that I need to move forward. And as you can tell, uh, I am really passionate about all of this and about fueling that business growth. And I really firmly believe that it is these female owned businesses that are gonna be so important and impactful as our economy recovers over the next couple years. We know that small business makes a difference in how our economy grows. And I know that it is these female owned businesses uh, that are gonna really drive that. Awesome. So now we have our very first guest speaker, Susan Alford is going to say a few words. And now what I need to do is actually, I'm going to just take a moment here and I'm going to turn her from an attendee into a panelist. And then you're going to see her pop up here. Okay, here she comes. I think I might have to, oh, there she is. Hi, Susan. Good morning, Lindsay, and everybody who I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. And I'm really loving your slides. They're so high voltage, right? It's so on brand with who, who you are as a person and who, you, who you're, who you're rebranding as, as a high voltage leadership. So, um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so thrilled to be here to get, as, as you've mentioned, I've been by your side for the last three years, basically since since yeah. we met in, co in um, when you're doing your coaching training and and really really tapping into the gift that you have as an individual and as and bringing together all of your talents into this beautiful business that serves continues to serve women like you like me like others who are growing businesses and want to make sure that they're growing them in a way that really aligns with their aligns with their mission and their, and their passion. So uh, as Lindsay has mentioned, I am a leadership coach and a PR strategist. I have worked for women leading in, in leadership roles throughout my career. I mean, when I look back, I realized that many of the women that I served early on as a PR strategist were, uh, I mean, many of the people I served were women, right? Whether it was the minister of the government department that I served or that the president, like one of the most senior women in the industry, industry worldwide was one of the people that I served as a PR strategist. And so I've, I've had the advantage of having a lot of really amazing women leaders in my world. And I, um, and I was always really fascinated about what, how were they so successful? What made them different? What did they do to ensure that they could be in that top rung spot while so many other women seem to seem to ha have some challenges with getting there, and and what and and so what I learned from that is that women actually do 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 things differently in terms of how they lead and how they um, how they get to the top, and it's really important that we acknowledge that. And so the work that Lindsay is here doing is really focused on the female leadership style, women in business, and what they need to do to cultivate and grow businesses that are that really serve. So um, one of the topics that comes up often in my coaching practice, because I, I coach a lot of women, and I coach a lot of women in business, is how to manage time. 
and and women are just trying to get do more with the time that they have and so time management is obviously huge for people everywhere but it i honestly believe that the working mother business owner demographic is the busiest demographic on the planet and we're always trying to figure out how to fit more in do more with less time um scale what we're doing to, so we can you know, clone ourselves and and when you get to a point where you just can't clone yourself anymore you just cannot do any more with the time you have then you need to hire Lindsay because Lindsay is going to help you grow your business with people who can also fulfill on the duties that you need to do in your business. And the biggest thing that I hear holding people back, holding my clients back when it comes to hiring that first staff or understanding what they need to do to bring on the right team is they don't want to jeopardize the brand and the culture and the business that they have built by hiring the wrong person. And they, they really want to ensure that the culture that they've worked so hard to create and the, and the quality that they have worked so hard to offer is not jeopardized when you bring on another team member. And so this is why Lindsay's business, in my mind, is very unique in this market. I don't know anybody else doing this work that is really focused on the female business owner building and growing team and cultivating culture inside their small business. So it, it's really a needed area. And I'm so thrilled that Lindsay is, is, is offering this work to the community here in Alberta. The other thing that I think is really important to notice during these times of COVID, unfortunately, as we're into the six months in now, is um, just recently, last week, in fact, uh, Lean In and McKinsey and Company released the findings of a study called Women in the Workplace. And it is the largest study on working women globally. And while it focuses on the corporate employee, it's also applicable to women in business. So what we discovered in this study that working mothers are deeply concerned about how COVID-19 are going to impact their careers and their businesses. And senior level women are experiencing the challenges of COVID-19 against a backdrop of existing bias against women leaders, many of whom are juggling more responsibilities at home than their counterpart than their male counterparts. And, and we also know that women of color who already face more barriers than most other groups of employees are less likely to get support from managers, have strong allies, and are more likely to feel that they can't bring their whole selves to work. So what this says to me is that in addition to the pressures that have already existed, the pressures of the pandemic are making this even harder for people to be able to manage on their own and even more reason why you need to make sure you've got the right people on your team so that you continue to grow or even just maintain the business that you've worked so hard to create. Because studies have shown that mothers are three times as likely as their as fathers to be responsible for the family's housework and child childcare during COVID-19. So what this says to me and is that we need to make sure we've got people to do the work. Like one of the ways that you are going to be able to continue to grow this business that you've worked so hard to grow is by ensuring you have the right team members in place and ensuring that culture is continued to be um, cultivated and ensuring that you're doing the right things to keep your employees engaged, right? Like what is it that you need to do to ensure that your people have what they need during this particularly challenging time? So in my mind, there's never been a time more, more evident than now that we need Lindsay services and we need to ensure that we are really focused on the value that we bring and ensuring that we um, are continuing to offer what we've, what we've been here to do all along. So I, I really, I welcome you, Lindsay, to the landscape of building women businesses and women female-led businesses and, and building meaningful businesses um, from the ground up and making sure you've got the right people on your team who are going to grow the business with you that you've worked so hard to grow. And I'm so thrilled to have you to be able to refer people to going forward. So welcome oh, and thank you. Susan, thank you so much, first of all, for your kind words. Thank you for that really incredible information. And guys, I'm going to find um, that survey because I think that that's wonderful, the Lena and McKinsey survey. And I'll post that for you because that sounds super interesting. And I really appreciate you sharing that, Susan. That's wonderful information for all of us um, as uh, female leaders and female business owners. Um, that, we, you know, we really need to arm ourselves with that information. And you're right. I think we are coming to really understand that as women, we are bearing a little bit of an extra burden here, um, particularly if we're mothers and have families. There's no doubt, right? This study has revealed that we have actually, the, the, the last six months, 
has removed five years of progress yeah. when it comes to women in leadership roles. Wow. And, and that's, in, that's inside corporate, but I'm also confident this also impacts business owners. Five years. Yeah. So the, the question that I've been asking people is, are you going to be one of those statistics? It says, do you need to let go? And, and we can honor that. But also just recognize that this is not just happening to you. This is happening to everyone and, and holding on to what you've built so hard to, to build. I mean, one way of doing that is to ensure you've got the right team. Yeah, there's absolutely no doubt um, that I think team and culture are becoming more important now than ever. But in order to have a great team and a great culture, you really have to be able to show up as a great leader. And I am so passionate about helping women build that personal leadership brand so they can show up in the right way and be powerful and confident. So thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate you being here this morning and, and giving us some really valuable information. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, so now I am going to move, oops, if I can do this, I'm gonna move Susan back to an attendee. And then I have someone really important that's gonna to talk to you this morning. This is my friend, Mel Friesen. And Mel was actually, just as I change things here, Mel was one of my very first clients. And she has been such an important part of helping me, first of all, become a really, uh, a really practiced professional coach. Um, and uh, she was uh, my, I call her my guinea pig client. So as part of my coach training, we did um, master coach certifications. And so I would record my uh, conversations with Mel, uh, with her permission, of course, and I would send them to my supervisor and be critiqued on them. So uh, Mel has always had a really special place in my heart. Um, and she has just recently launched her business. She's an entrepreneur. Uh, so I wanted to ask her here today to speak with you guys a little bit about um, the coaching that we did and the influence that it's had on her now uh, as she's launched her business. So Mel, take it away. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, first of all, I just have to congratulate you because I've hosted a couple of workshops on Zoom and they have not gone this smooth. So <laughs> I am like super pumped for you. And we're going to have some offline chats about how you made it look so easy because mine <laughs> had so many techie troubles. So congratulations. Thank you. But yeah, I should honestly say thank you so much for, for really including me in this, in this exciting part of your growth of your business because I think it's awesome. And I think, you know, you truly speak to women who are looking to, you know, make a difference and, and show up, like you said, in their best way, in their best self, um, with the most confidence. And that's, that's kind of really the biggest piece for me. And what I wanted to, to talk to people about was just how much confidence I got within our coaching conversations. Um, you know, a little bit about my story to, to kind of, Put everyone into perspective of where I came from. You know, I had worked for many years in administrative, um, you know, kind of downtown, just admin jobs, just living my life, doing my thing, and always thought, you know, this is, I guess this is what I'm meant to do. And, you know, found enjoyment through working with colleagues, but really had never found that passion um, out of the work that I was actually doing. And so, I, you know, I, I kind of was just coasting for a while. And I don't know what happened somewhere along the way, but a light bulb kind of went off for me. And it was um, about three years ago. And I decided, you know what, like life is really too short, you know, and I, I'm a kind of person that has a spark and passion to help people and to help people live their best life. I, I mean, I feel like that's how we kind of have that connection too, you know, um, is how we're driven to when we're around people to want to inspire them to be their best um selves and so i knew there was something i wanted to do i could just never put my finger on it and so i say this light bulb went off and it's true like i i just one day decided i'm, I'm gonna change my life and it was actually really scary because i thought what am i gonna do next you know like how is it gonna look and i have passion for health and nutrition and you know and so i have this kinesiology degree but that's never really um been a part of where, where I'm actually working. And 
I knew I needed to piece some things together to make it feasible, you know, especially when I, again, I've already got two children, I've got mortgages, I've got this life that like, I can't, I can't imagine myself just dropping everything to go chase a dream. You know, it had to make sense. It had to be something I could bring to my husband, who's the total budget manager. I can't just, you know, drop my life and go chase my dream. So I think Lindsay fell into my life at the perfect time. Um, I almost feel like, and maybe we've talked about this, Lindsay, is, is kind of that serendipity of, you know, we just cross paths at the right time. I had known Lindsay from a previous, um, one of the roles that I had. And again, she was one of those colleagues that I loved working with. And so we had kept in touch and something sparked when, you know, she was talking about her new business and, and looking for some clients. And I said, you know what, like this, this is something that is going to make a big impact on the journey that I'm about to take. And I don't think I could do it by myself. I think the piece that was missing for me, and this is what I'm getting at is the confidence um, that I could do it. You know, I never saw myself as someone who could have their own business. I saw myself as someone who was creative, but I didn't know if I could do it, you know, and, and it's kind of, it sounds silly saying it out loud now that, you know, I didn't think I could do it, you know, but it's true. I think for me, I was overwhelmed with the possibility of it. You know, I had these ideas and I had this imagination of what it might look like, but to get there, you know, that seems so far over here and I'm so far over here. I didn't know how to piece that together. So I think what Lindsay did, you know, when we started coaching together is she helped bridge that gap. You know, she really was there to help organize my busy brain. You know, she, she helped me to prioritize what was going to be important and, and how I could take those first steps, you know, and I say that, but I also say it, um, knowing that, you know, she, she, she asked some tough questions. So I knew it wasn't going to be easy and, and Lindsay didn't make it easy. You know, she, uh, she pushed me and I think, where I was at, it was just what I needed. I think without that, I don't think I could have got to where I am. Um, again, like I said, I had felt overwhelmed with all these things that I wanted to piece together to go from working in this corporate world to starting a small business. Um, and so I had these ideas and Lindsay and I talked about that. She really helped me kind of take a step back, start to look at the priorities and really piece it together. Um, something that I really found interesting in the process too, was that we weren't just talking about my professional goals. And that's kind of what I thought. I thought, Oh, she's a professional. She's going to coach me. We're going to talk about how to start my business. It's going to be all about, you know, the professional part. And it just was interesting how seamless it worked in with the rest of my life. We talked about, you know, personal things and, and things that I had deep inside that I hadn't talked about in a long time, but really in the process, I figured out that that is what was going to take me to get to that next step was to make sure I was my most confident self in my relationships, you know, even with my husband, with my friends, with people that I'm going to be coming in contact with. It was not just how are you going to set up your business? So that blend of like that personal and professional um, part of the coaching was surprising to me, but actually really helped me to move forward. Um, and it's made a big difference in my life. Like I can say that because of our conversations, not only talking about professional goals, um, but I was really able to see how it made a difference in all these areas of my life. Um, and one thing I really believe in is that we can't do it all on our own. You know, I'm one of those people who I kind of like to micromanage, you know, I'd like to control things at home, what's for dinner and what the kids are wearing and, you know, all those little micro details that really don't matter. But I do find that when you open it up and let people in and allow yourself to build a team of people that are on your side, it's, it just exponentially, you know, helps. And I, I'm trying to put that into words. It's, it's tricky, but, um, I knew I couldn't do it on my own. And Lindsay came in just at the right time. You know, I jumped on that opportunity to work with her, her positive attitude and, you know, the way she was able to, to, to set it up for me and to have me, you know, be open to it and be open to change and be open to the, the, the possibility of, you know, what could be, you know, that's, that's what I needed. 
So I think now about my business. So I've started my, my small business, like Lindsay was saying about three or four months ago. Um, but I'm constantly reminded of those things that Lindsay and I have talked about, about, you know, when things become challenging, what do you do first? And when, you know, things aren't quite going as you think, how can you shift? How can you, you know, make that, that shift in your mind so that it's an approachable, you know, problem solving thing that I can do as opposed to sitting there and being like, well, I can't do this. I'm, I'm just not cut out to be a small business owner then, you know, this just isn't working out for me. Um, those conversations that Lindsay and I have, have stuck, stuck in my brain and in my heart of thinking about, you know what, I can do this. And, and, um, and I have to give thanks to Lindsay for that. Like, I don't know if I have thanked you enough because I think about our conversations all the time. And, and I think that will continue to be a part of how I grow my own business as well. So I would recommend, you know, Lindsay to, to anyone that I know who's looking to, again, yeah, grow their business and, and just help to get organized and build up that confidence. Cause I think that's a major piece of the pie is making sure you feel confident to take on those big risks um, and to see it pay off. It's, you know, it's, it's been amazing for me. And so I have to thank Lindsay and um, yeah, that's all I had to say. Wow. Th thanks. That just your kind words, um, your enthusiasm, that's really thanks enough um, for me. And actually, to really see the business that you long for, the passion that you have for helping people find the you know nutritious alternatives um, for themselves and their families, and being open uh, to embracing that 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 honestly that's thanks for me. Um, so I I just I'm really sincerely appreciate your words today, um, and um, that that you would uh, you know jump online this morning and come and speak with us about your experience and. It's so gratifying to know that it's still, even a couple years later, it still is a part of uh, your journey. Um, that, that's amazing for me. That's, man, that just gives me the tingles all over, I'll be honest. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for being willing to come online this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. yes, we'll talk about tech later. Um, okay, so I'm okay. gonna put, put my friend Mel back as an attendee. There we go. Awesome. Now you can see me again. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mel. That is just brilliant. So now is uh, the really exciting part. We are going to do a little uh, quick workshop here uh, to see if we can uncover your leadership superpower this morning. So buckle up, everybody. Uh, let's, let's get started here. So as part of your pre-event package, you got, um, there was a page in there that had some of these questions on them. So I know that you guys are really, really busy. Um, so you may not have had a chance to spend any time on this and that is absolutely okay. It's not gonna impact our ability uh, to find your superpower this morning. But I thought what I would do is I would put these questions up here so you could sort of read them and noodle them a bit as I talk a little bit about leadership and your leadership brand and how your superpower fits into that. Um, so realistically, having a leadership brand is something that most of us don't actually think about. It's not something that we really consider, um, but it's an important part of how others perceive you. And the truth is, if you have uh, you know, more than a couple people in your sphere, whether that's at home or at work or in your business or in your community, you have a leadership brand. Whether you actually know it or not, it already exists. And it really is about that perception of how you show up. And I'm not, um, you know, like, so it's not just about leading at work. It's really about, you know, how we lead ourselves from the inside. It's about how we lead in our family and what our role is there. It's about how we show up and how we lead in our communities and in our friend groups. Um, so it really is about how we show up in all of our relationships. 
Um, so in that way, having and knowing and understanding um, and really growing our leadership brand on purpose is actually really, really important. Um, so one of the little key pieces of having a leadership brand is really understanding what are your leadership superpowers? What do you do really, really well? And for each of us, that's going to be a completely different thing. So um, in the larger scope, um, there are pieces about leadership superpowers and they don't have to be just one. We can have more, uh, more than just the one piece. Um, and um, some of us like to lead from the front. Some of us are more comfortable leading from behind and there's moments when we should actually be able to shift between the two things. That's a bit of a superpower as well. Of course, we have to lead from inside and some of that is about our own moral compass and our integrity and how we live that. Um, and then we also have to be able to lead from the side co-lead with people again whether that's in business or we're co-leading with a partner or we're co-creating with our children um, we have to be able to live all four of those facets so again the leadership superpower is a really important part a foundational part of understanding how do we lead in all of those ways and perhaps how we shift or maybe don't shift um, in terms of those four facets of our leadership Okay, so these questions um, are not meant to be onerous in any way. They are simply to get you noodling about um, some of the leadership superpowers that you've seen or experienced. So perhaps it's something that you admired in a, in a leader that you've had. I know I've had some really impactful leaders in my life as I was growing as a professional. Perhaps it's uh, something that you've seen from a mentor or a teacher uh, that you've had uh, that was really impactful, something that you've taken away and really tried to exhibit yourself. Or maybe it's something you already know that you're really, really good at or that you get a compliment about most often. So what's really important here is just to think a, a little bit, make a few notes if, if you have a pen handy, um, and what are some of the things that you pull out of these questions? So I'll just give you one moment uh, to kind of noodle these just a little bit. Okay, so here are some of the things that could be really important. So perhaps uh, you have heard comments in the past or had experience with a leader um, that really was very energetic or had a lot of charisma and that really stuck with you or it's something that you hear about yourself all the time. That's certainly true for me being high voltage, something people talk about for me all the time. Maybe it is about the kindness and the empathy and the equality that uh, you have brought to conversations or that you've seen exhibited in others and thought, that's who I aspire to be. Maybe it's about the way you help people connect and collaborate and build uh, incredible teams or friendships or communities. Um, perhaps it's about that communication and the translation piece. Maybe that's something that you've seen a leader do really well, is that they really communicate beautifully, or you've had someone comment on that before. It's all about the golden threads here. What, what do you see uh, as being pieces that really stand out for you in your experience, but also in how you show up in the world? And realistically, uh, this is all about what your passion is, what resonates for you, what really gives you energy in terms of how you show up. So this is just some examples. You may have seen something quite different when you answered those questions, but I want you to think about that golden thread. What, what is the thing that runs through all of your answers and experiences? So now we want to think about what are, maybe there's two or three of these amazing things that have come to light for you as you've explored those questions, even as I've given you some examples. And perhaps they show up as I am this, or I have that, or I do this. That's the way some of these answers can present themselves. Um, maybe it also could be I have experienced this, 
Um, and, and so those will help you identify what those golden threads are in terms of the leadership experiences that you have had. So I'll give you a moment, you can think through those just a little bit. So as you are exploring those two or three pieces, what is one thing that you know in your bones that truly, truly resonates with you? Either it makes you feel that warm, tingly feeling, or maybe it's something in your head that kind of pings. It's that one thing that you know makes you really, really special. And now I'd like you to take a moment and think about what's the impact that you have on your world, on your sphere, when you really are living and doing that one thing. How is everyone around you impacted? What happens? What is the ripple effect of that one thing? Because the truth is, that's really your superpower. So now we can take. This is one example of how you can structure your superpower statement. So my leadership superpower is this. It enables me to do this so that I can do that. And again, I'll give you just a moment to jot down um, your leadership superpower statement. So guys, this is really just one example of how you can structure. It's very, it's a very simple example, but I'll give you um, an example that I actually came up with as I was creating this uh, for this um, presentation today, this little mini workshop. Um, it actually really helped me define what one of my leadership superpowers it is. So I'll share it with you. Um, hopefully that it'll inspire you um, to create your own. So my leadership superpower of being a, an incredible translator and connector enables me to bring together diverse groups of people to create incredible teams that are built on trust and accountability and collaborate and innovate to create really, truly impactful people strategies. So this is one of my superpowers. And you can see it's sort of loosely based on that very simple structure. I gave you just a moment ago, but it's a little bit more elaborate. And the truth is, I had a little bit more time to think about it. So don't think that you need to come up with a superpower statement that looks quite like this um, in this moment it could be really tricky. Um, but the truth is, what I wanted to do today was just create a moment where you could really start to think about what it is that truly makes you special as a leader and what it is the impact that you have um, when you truly live that leadership superpower and how you impact everyone around you and all of your relationships. So now that you've seen this example, I'm going to go back one slide and give you another moment to let you craft your own leadership superpower statement. Is there anyone that feels brave enough to actually um, want to talk about uh, their leadership superpower? Maybe you want to put it in the chat box or raise your hand um, if you feel brave enough and I will unmute you and you can tell us your leadership superpower. So let me know if somebody's really interested. Okay. Oh, there we go. Awesome. All right. If you feel like you've created something that you want to share, I really want to encourage you to do that. Put it in the chat box, guys, so we can all see it. 
Um, but I hope that you have been able to uncover um, something that is really impactful for you um, and maybe something that you didn't know before. Oh, Sue Ann. My leadership superpower is pragmatic insight, which enables me to enlighten others so I can help them realize their potential. Sue Ann, that is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Um, and, you know, having spent the last couple of years working with you, this is exactly true. It really is your leadership superpower. And I absolutely love that you would share it with us today. Thank you so much for doing that. Again, guys, if you have one you want to pop in the chat, please do, and I'll check back in a minute. Oh, and can I close the chat box? There we go. Awesome. So there's just one more step um, to making sure, just doing a quick check-in to make sure that this leadership superpower really resonates for you. So does this represent who I am and what I can do? Really, you know, look back, read it over, make sure that it is really representative of who you are and how you show up. Is this superpower something that really creates value? Um, and if it really is a true leadership superpower, it will create a ton of value, not just for you, but again, for everyone that is around you and in all of your different relationships. And then what are the rewards for really living this superpower? And I feel like not only is this, again, rewards for you, but what does it do in your circle and in your different relationships? How does it benefit others when you show up and you really, really live that leadership superpower? So guys, I hope that this little teeny tiny mini workshop was really impactful for you today. I hope that you will continue to share if you have a leadership superpower um, in the chat box. It's absolutely awesome to see those. Um, and uh, I hope that this was really valuable for you. I'm actually designing an entire uh, leadership workshop um, that is actually, this is just one little part of, and I'm going to be really excited uh, to launch that uh, later this year. Um, I think it's going to be really impactful and help people really truly step into um, what, what they're really meant to do and how, who they're really meant to be as a leader. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited about it. All right. So now um, I have another really awesome client testimonial uh, from my client and dear friend, Irina. Irina couldn't be with us this morning because she is um, still working in her full-time job. Although she has recently started her own business and um, is really looking forward uh, to moving her own entrepreneurial venture forward. She's super excited about it. But because she's still in her day job, she couldn't be with us today. So she sent me the most incredible video. In total, it's over 10 minutes long, which is just remarkable and super flattering that she would be able to talk for 10 minutes uh, about how the coaching that we have done together has been impactful in her life. Uh, so with her permission, I've actually edited the video uh, because uh, 10 minutes was just a little too long for the format that we're doing today. Um, but what I'm going to do is it's actually a YouTube video that I've embedded in here. So let's see if this works. The volume is quite low, uh, so I'm going to try and be super quiet so you can hear my friend Irina talk. Hi, my name is Irina, and I'm hoping you can say it's my personal coach for two years. Um, really, in the last 20 years or so, it's just been a blur of um, people, events, and activities that I found that I wasn't really connected with. So uh, in those sort of revelations, I've learned that I just maybe wanted something better. So in working with Lindsay and meeting every two weeks in the last almost two years, I've learned that uh, I just don't have a very good connection with myself. I don't know or I didn't know rather uh, maybe very much about myself or uh, I didn't no, I never really had formulated what my values are as a person, and I just oh, I didn't have a very much awareness of maybe some of the things that I was doing or my traits and habits. So since I started working with uh, Lindsay, I've been able to uncover some of those things. 
uh, the conversation also would start by talking about a particular maybe event or something happened or it didn't happen for that matter. And that would kind of spin itself into this unveiling of, oh, well, this is why I'm doing this or this is why I'm not doing that. And it's kind of been a really fun journey to learn more about myself and how I interact with others or how I don't interact with others more often than not and uh, just to maybe help myself along in those uh, relationships and how I was not maybe showing up for myself as a person and therefore I wasn't able to uh, conduct myself with the confidence that I knew I had inside but just could never quite squeeze it outside. Uh, in my travels as well, I've learned that I have a few, let's say, voices in my head. Um, I don't think I'm crazy, but there are different maybe uh, p parameters or different uh, sides of me that I have that sometimes maybe compete with each other. But the loudest has always been that naysayer voice, the one that says not enough or not uh, quite there or know this or know that and that's maybe been the toughest and took the longest to not so much recognize or recognize that relatively quickly but to be able to nip it to not let it run wild for days on end and let it run sort of my life and my choices so in the working with a personal coach and to be able to maybe address a different situation or different scenario in the way that helps me understand what i'm doing and why i'm doing it and adjust accordingly and uh, in learning how to manage this uh, saboteur voice uh, I've been able to move forward with my self-perception and my self-expression and really my self-confidence. I've always, um, I've never really considered myself to be a negative person, but it was always maybe in neutral. It's neither, it's not negative, but it's not positive either. So this sort of voice or the quieting of this negative voice has helped me uh, be more maybe assertive in the way I communicate with others, especially uh, working in the largely male dominated industry uh, to, it has helped me really just express myself better. Uh, and also in all of this, um, I'm not questioning anymore whether or not people should hear me and my opinions, but it's more about, well, this is my story and this is how I am going to show up not just for others but mostly for myself because me one day my mess is going to become a message and my tests are going to become my testimonials in uh, this thing we're all in called life awesome okay I hope you all could hear that Irina is a pretty soft speaker and uh, so it was uh, difficult to get the volume up. I'm not quite that tech savvy, I'm afraid. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't alter that uh, on my own. Um, but I, I think what's really important, first of all, is um, I'm so grateful that Irina would, uh, you know, even think to uh, record a video like this for me. It's, it's such an honor to have clients, um, past and present. Um, that are so willing to speak to the impact that the coaching that we've done together has had on their life and on their work and on their families and on their connections. Um, and in particular, uh, you know, Irina was very brave and vulnerable in speaking about her saboteur voice or that inner critic that we all deal with. Um, and for so many of the clients that I work with, that is such a big part of the work that we do. Um, and that's why even though it's leadership coaching and a lot of time clients come to me because they want to be a better leader in their business, it really is very much personal. And it is about understanding um, what do we, uh, what are our values, our purpose, what is that, you know, that critical voice saying to us that's really holding us back in all of our relationships and all the ways that we show up in our lives. So um, I was so lucky uh, to see Irina this morning. She dropped by before work. And so I was able to thank her, but um, uh, this contribution has been incredible. 
All right, so I want to spend just a couple minutes um, telling you about uh, some of the core programs uh, that I've developed for high voltage leadership um, that I think are going to be uh, just really important uh, to these uh, women uh, business leaders, women business owners, um, and, and just give you a little bit of insight. Of course, there's more information on my absolutely incredible website, uh, but I'll give you just a really brief overview here this morning. So, of course, my signature program is really the VIP leadership, and you've heard from Mel and Irina about how uh, the one-on-one -on -one leadership coaching is so impactful for them, not just as entrepreneurs or leaders in business, but also as individuals, as people, as women. Um, and that's what's really important about this. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really a, a, about working very specifically. And the truth is very intimately and in a very co-active way. It really is uh, such a beautiful relationship to be in. And it is all about tackling those things that are important to us as people. And the truth is, we show up as our whole selves every day in everything we do, whether we're at home with our family, whether we're at work with our teams, or whether we're out in our communities coaching or being leaders in those spaces. So the VIP coaching is the one-on-one -on -one program uh, that really is all about what is important to you as an individual. What, what, are, what are you longing for? What are you looking to create in your life and in your whole world? So then the second program, for those people uh, that think they want to have a little bit more community, a little bit more connection, is my Inner Circle program. And I'm actually launching that here at the end of the month. Um, the, it'll be uh, every second Monday. We'll be meeting as a group of uh, female business leaders and entrepreneurs and business owners to talk together and work as a community on a particular hot topic. So every week we will have a topic to discuss and coach and debate and brainstorm on that is really present and really timely for all of us in what we're trying to build as business owners. So I'm really excited. This program is very small. There's only eight spots and I am offering a special founders price for that um, so I'll I'll give you um, I'll give you the link so that you can uh, connect with that if that's something you're interested in if you want um, coaching but also that connection and that community the inner circle is the right place for you um, and then the other signature package that I have is my people strategy SOS so for so many of my clients, they come to me because there is really something going tragically wrong in their business. Uh, their team is struggling. They are struggling. Uh, they're having trouble capitalizing on that business plan that they've worked so hard on. Maybe there's some toxicity. Maybe they're having trouble re-engaging after being apart due to COVID. Um, and actually for some of my clients, it really is about how do I build a culture now that we are all working remotely? So this People Strategy SOS gives me an opportunity to come in, do a deep dive, and do some diagnostics on what is happening. So in this program, I spend time up front with that business owner and their leadership team if necessary, and then I do some work and some surveys with their whole team. Um, and, and from there, do some analysis and come up with a report that then gives us some things that we can really strategically start to work on that are going to make an impact in their business right away. Uh, so the People Strategy SOS is a short-term upfront engagement that leads to big, beautiful People Strategy pieces in the end um, and always, uh, always gives this business owner something really tangible that they can take away and start to work on. So I'm really excited. These are my first First three programs as high voltage leadership so much more to come as I've said um, I have a leadership program that I'm working on building right now you got a little bit of a taste of it uh, with the leadership superpower mini workshop this morning that's going to be coming out by the end of the year um, and I actually am just launching uh, my culture revival toolkit and that's available online for download that really I created um, here uh, this uh, summer and it really is a very strategic toolkit all about helping those organizations that have struggled through COVID and are now coming back together, whether you are in a storefront and reopening your doors or whether you are coming back to the office now, as so many of us are. Um, and it is a program and a download that is all about helping you 
reconnect your team in a really impactful way. So again, you can start moving forward on your business plan and really start executing. So that's going to be available for download on my website here today. I'm really, really excited about launching that. So that's just a little bit about my core programs. Uh, I hope that if you have any questions that you will reach out. Um, I always offer uh, a connection point with anyone who is interested or has questions. And I'll uh, make sure that you have a link uh, to jump into my calendar because I do have some open spots if you're interested. So now I have another amazing video from my friend and social media mentor and guru, Mr. Jonathan Christian, one, one of my favorite people. Uh, and he sent me this amazing video. So I'm gonna play this for you now. Hey folks, my name is Jonathan Christian. I am the founder of a digital agency here in British Columbia called We Make Stuff Happen. And let me ask today to tell you about Lindsay White. Right, in case she gets me in trouble. This is what Lindsay told me to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go straight to hell off of that one. <laughs> no, seriously, there's only somebody like Lindsay I could do that with. She has such a great, wicked sense of humor. It works, right? You need to have fun in life. You need to have people around you that see the greatness in you, have experience to bring something to the table and make you better. And that's Lindsay White. You know, I've known her through social media for a long time. We've worked together for a couple of years. You all know, she's a grandma, she's a wife, she's a mom, she's, oh gosh, how many more adjectives could you put into who Lindsay White is? Too many, but she's a real deal, that's what she is. She has been alongside a lot of people on a lot of journeys through the peaks and the troughs. We all have it, even her own life, she's had it too. The husband working in the energy sector in Alberta, oh yeah, she gets it. So sometimes in life, you know, we get to a place that we can't go it alone. It's a place sometimes that we just like, we know what we need to do, we don't know how to do it. Sometimes we don't even know what to do, we're just paralyzed with fear. That's when Lindsay White walks right through your virtual door and says, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Because I can tell you when she says, I'm speaking, you need to listen. She comes from the school of life. She comes from a place that most of us um, wish we didn't have to go through, but we do. And you know, there is no right or wrong in life. It's just what it is. And Lindsay has been through so many situations with people, taking them to a whole new place. The definition of leadership is helping someone go to a place that they couldn't get to by themselves. That's what Lindsay does. But she does it with fun, she does it with chutzpah, she does it with experience, and she does it with a place of grace. She really does. So when you see Lindsay White on social media, she's a real deal. When she says what she says, it's the real deal. So if you're looking for a leadership coach, if you're looking for a mentor, if you're looking for a, a friend actually, who is willing to sort of take you as you are with no judgment, take you to a place that you probably couldn't get to by yourself, then I 100% unreservedly, unreservedly, get my been going now, <laughs> recommend Lindsay White. I have not been paid to say this. This is purely from my heart to yours. And I know she's a real deal. I've met her husband. I've met her. I've seen what she does. And it's amazing. So if you need a chance to work with somebody who can make your life amazing too, I highly recommend you speak. Pick up the phone, send her a direct message, get on Zoom, whatever that looks like. The sooner you get in touch with her, the better your life's going to become. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you need to hear it from me offline, give me a call. Bye for now. Wow. What a, what a remarkable uh, testimonial from Jonathan. And speaking as someone who is the real deal, uh, Jonathan is, I think, one of the most caring, kind, and generous human beings I have ever encountered. Um, he absolutely will, without even a question, give you the shoes off his feet or the clothes off his back. Um, and he has been incredibly kind to me over the last three years. Jonathan really is uh, a big part of my presence online. Uh, he and his team were absolutely instrumental in, the truth is, helping me understand what high-voltage leadership really was. 
um, and what it needed to be, and then giving it the beautiful color and context and branding that it needed to really come alive. So the truth is, I wouldn't be here today with all of this beautiful presentation without them, because they really uh, took who I am and what I really long to do um, and what I'm really passionate about. And they turned it into something big and beautiful and visual. And so it's absolutely incredible to work with partners like Jonathan and his team who are able to take what is in my head and comes out of my mouth and make it something very visual that then I can bring to each of you. So I'm so lucky to have him and his team as partners. And the truth is, as friends, as Jonathan said, we were just out for supper with him and his wife, Debbie, when they were here in Calgary just a few weeks ago. And it is so remarkable to work with partners that you can count amongst friends uh, and that you can call on uh, to record an impromptu video and talk about um, how they experience me. Um, and Jonathan's right. Um, the truth is my leadership coaching comes from a place of personal, very personal experience. Um, and uh, I love to be able to bring that to all of you. And I love that it shows up in my social media and in my online presence as well. So thanks so much to Jonathan uh, for recording that video for me. Uh, it's just incredibly touching. Awesome. So guys, um, high voltage leadership is really all about your leadership how you show up, who you are, and how you want to step into your world. It's really about your culture and how you want to create that, what you want to foster, how you want your organization to exist. And it really is about your people strategy. So how you want to take your business plan and really make it come to life through your team and through your people. And I am so excited that you guys have been here with me today. It's absolutely remarkable uh, to have so much incredible support. Um, and I'm absolutely honored um, that you all have spent so much time with me this morning. Um, I hope that you will reach out and connect with me. Um, there's my email and, of course, the website. I'd love it if you would go and visit. Um, and um, I'm on all the social media platforms. Thanks to Jonathan and his team. I show up everywhere and you guys have really experienced that over the last week. And what I would ask of all of you is if, if you know someone, if you know a small business owner, um, a woman who is trying to build something incredible and who is trying to be a great leader, I would love it if you would share um, any of this or uh, refer them to me or get, put them in touch, I would absolutely love that. I always um, am happy to schedule an initial conversation with people. And I do that with no cost or obligation because I just love to connect first and foremost. Um, and I absolutely love to talk with female leaders. Um, and um, so what I'm gonna do is make sure that my uh, link to my calendar is available and people um, can just book themselves um, little conversations. I have a few spaces coming up next week. So if that's something that's of interest to you, please let me know right away. I have about four spaces next week um, and I would love to chat with you further. Thank you again. Um, for anyone, uh, for all of you that have been here today, um, and for all of your ongoing support. It's just been absolutely magical. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, um, I'd love to see them. I'm just going to open up the chat here. Oh, Denise posted her, um, uh, her leadership superpower. So I want to read these out before I let you go. So Denise says, my leadership superpower is my ability to dig deep to find the authentic stories of business owners that really resonate with their audience and enables me to help them tell the true story of their business and realize their hopes and dreams. Denise, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And you really are an amazing storyteller. Denise and I have been working together over the last few weeks and uh, she's really helped bring my story to life. Um, and Susan's put hers in the chat box as well. And she says, my leadership superpower is my ability to recognize the strengths of others, which enables me to have an impact on their success so I can help others realize their dreams. Oh, Susan, again, that's just absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that, you guys. Those are really deeply personal things. Our leadership superpowers are really personal to us. And I am so grateful that you would be willing to share that with the group this morning. It's been absolutely fantastic. 
<laughs> Jonathan just said his leadership superpower is his smile. And there's absolutely no doubt, Jonathan, your smile is so engaging um, and it makes people just feel so warm and connected right from the start. You don't even have to say anything. Um, and that really is such a beautiful part of you. Uh, guys, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to hang out and answer them about leadership, uh, about culture, about people strategy. Um, but I want to thank you again. I know your time is super valuable this morning. And again, I'm, I'm so grateful to everyone that joined. Thank you again to Susan and Mel and Jonathan and Irina for all of your incredible kind words. Thank you guys for being a part of this live launch. Uh, thank you for sharing high voltage leadership with the world and what I want to create for female business owners. Uh, I'm so excited to really get started. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks guys. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, everyone.